All right, um, it's been a while since I've uh, published a video. And, uh, all last year I have been uh, spending a lot of my time uh, grafting and rate, learning how to raise queens, uh, starter hives and finisher hives, uh, mating nook hives. This year I wanted to attempt using an incubator with the queen cells. Uh, take the queen cell, the capped queen cells out at day six and then uh, at six, day 16 they would be emerged which would be 10 days in the incubator. So that's what I have done back here. I want to show you what I have done. I, uh, I thought about buying an incubator and then I thought about just seeing if I couldn't build one with stuff that I had around that wasn't going to really cost me a lot of a lot of money and that's what I did. So let's go inside. Let's take a look at what I did and I'll show you exactly how I did it and what parts I used for that. Anyway, see you in there. All right, this is what I've built so far as far as an incubator. Um, this is just rig really a uh, styrofoam box that I found <laughs> actually sitting on the side of the road. It's one of those standard boxes that, uh, uh, that you see some of the meat uh, shipped in. And I've got with it uh, a circulating fan here, which is really just a uh, fan out of a computer. It seems to be working fine. It does require 12 volts and that I had to get a, um, an existing Radio Shack transformer for me or power supply for me and I've set it, uh, this particular one you can set it for various types of uh, voltage output and I've got it set for 12 volts. Um, but anyway let's, let's open this up and I'll show you what I've done. Just set the lid aside for the moment and we'll look in here and I've got the heat going right now the light is on you can see the light uh, this right here is the box that I'm going to be using as the uh, individual cells uh, or, or individual areas I guess you could call it cells for the um, for the queen cells and what you do is this this box is a Plano, but it already comes perforated with all these air holes in it. And what I've done is the individual, the individual separators, I have uh, taken them out. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. I've taken them out and I've drilled, I've drilled two holes in them. I don't know if you can see those holes or not. I'm trying to turn it at an angle so you can see the holes. And uh, one of the holes is to hold a JZBZ cup in the upright position and that one this one right here will be used to put like a drop of honey in for food for the queen once she emerges she will need to be fed within just hours of emerging otherwise she's going to die so that's what these upright uh, JZBC cups are for and then the uh, JZBC cup that has the capped queen cell I will then put it in the upper um, compartment so that so that once this door is closed, it's then uh, she er, er, each one of those cells are individually separated. With the other three queen cell carriers removed, you can see what I've done is I've taken some wooden strips here and I've just um, put them in there spacing them so that I can easily slide a, a tray in and get it out without it getting interfered with something else. With the light off you can see that I've got power coming I've got power coming from my uh, thermostat source and it provides power to the light bulb here which is a 40 watt light bulb. I've done some experimentation. I have learned that the 40 watt light bulb seems to hold the temperature inside uh, inside this uh, styrofoam box a little more constantly. If I use the larger watt light bulb, the, the temperature is going to fluctuate quite a bit more. I put the partition in this way. As the air flows this way over the heat source, it then it then turns around and then blows toward the queen cell carrier cases. What you see right there is that's held on with the with the blue painter's tape uh, is the thermal couple 
and that right there measures the temperature in this area and then controls my uh, thermostat controller which is an Elitech STC 1000. I have the STC 1000 uh, thermal control device set at uh, 30 to go off or turn off at 34.6 degrees um, so it's going to stay on until it gets to 34.6 degrees and then I've got a, th a three tenths of a degree differential so that once the temperature drops down to uh, 34.3 degrees then the light will turn back on. Once the light goes off at 34.6 degrees the light comes back on at 34.3 degrees but the temperature continues to drop to 34.0 degrees so there's a uh, like a six tenths of a degree fluctuation of the temperature in here with this thing set at three at the at the uh, thermal difference of three tenths of a degree so this is a relatively simple incubator that I have built just simply out of a styrofoam box with some uh, uh, some wooden spacers to to help guide the the trays are what's going to be holding the uh, capped queen cells the capped queen cells will uh, be fully capped uh, in the cell builder at about day seven or eight and then uh, and then about another eight to ten days they will be in the incubator and then at that point I will have an emerged virgin queen that I can then place in a, uh, a mating nook that I have that I have put together so hopefully this has helped somebody. Um, certainly, if you have questions, you know, make a comment below, and hope, and we'll try to get something answered for you. This is my new experiment, and I've not really uh, put any queen cells in here yet. We'll take a look and we'll check it out in a few months. It's in uh, April time frame, we'll test it out and hopefully, hopefully it'll work, and we'll get a bunch of queen cells. That way, I won't have to uh, make up a bunch of frame mating nooks uh, on a queen cell that may or may not emerge. So we'll see how it goes and uh, we'll report back later. Hope this, hope this has helped. I thought this was kind of an easy project. It was a fun project and you know why would you buy something if you get some kind of satisfaction out of building it? You know, so that's what I did. Y'all have a great day.